Here comes Fred. I like your picture. Very nice picture of uh, <laughs> alien. <laughs> Actually, we are all alien to this uh, word in a way. So it depicts really well. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes, my name is Fred. I'm from uh, Belgium, uh, Brussels. So the other side of the world. Uh, and it was a couple of weeks ago, I also discovered your YouTube channel. And it was one of the first channels I really uh, enjoyed the meditations. Um, and I was lucky to see that this course started just uh, at this moment. So I subscribed directly. So here I am. Um, and yeah, just to say, I'm very interested in the whole Indian philosophy. Uh, I read a lot of books, study the Vedas. Uh, and now I want to learn something more about uh, Ramana. Thank you. Tanya? Hi, uh, Sanjay. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Tanya from Perth. A um, lot uh, like a couple of the other speakers, I'm very interested in self inquiry. Um, came across some of your YouTube uh, postings, uh, satsangs, and some of your meditations and found them excellent. I uh, have also been doing some uh, reading few books by David Godman which are fabulous and uh, really keen to learn what I can from you thank you and I'm really grateful that you're holding these classes it's terrific start with that silence with me. and um, look I have to tell you that I'm not going to give you any new concept for anything actually self-inquiry is I call it a process it is a process of understanding and when this understanding uh, becomes really clear in your own self, you discover your own true self. That's all it's all about. So it is not that you have to pick up new concepts and it's not any intellectual understanding of anything. If you don't understand anything, what I'm saying, it doesn't matter because you don't have to construct anything. You only have to deconstruct your concepts, that's all. We have created concepts, our concepts, our concepts. And that keeps us as an individual, as an entity, as a person. And something is holding grounds, which we call as ego, which is nothing but just these concepts creating an illusion of an entity. That's all, there's nothing there. And this all is an illusion. And this illusion, if it goes away by listening to what I'm saying, job is done. As uh, Ravi was talking about uh, his own journey and doing different meditations and uh, understanding. Here, there is no meditation in that sense of meditation, which we call as meditation. Because here understanding has to come that meditator has to dissolve. There is no, and then what is left is, it's, it's eternal meditation. It is a ongoing flow of meditation within us, which never stops. And that means that we are what we are. And we don't pretend or think that we are something else. That's all it is. It is so easy, so simple, so direct. All rest of the paraphernalia, which we talk about in spirituality, are things to come to this understanding only, nothing else, whether you call it a yoga, are doing some breathing exercises, poses, bringing, they say, one-pointed mind. And then there are japas and doing, uh, you know, to bring mind more, settle mind. Or it, it's devotion, you know, devoted to some God or some, uh, some entity, some power. But at the end, it all comes down to dissolving to what we think, what we are, which is nothing but a myth. So if you understand this and this 
can cause that opening. If you listen to this from your heart and you're ready for that opening, you are already there. So in our daily life, we keep looking for so many things. Mind never stops. It never takes rest. It takes us into one task and then another task and another task. Sometimes that task is doing an action. Other times it's just daydreaming type of task in mind that I'll do this, then I'll do this, and this person likes me, this doesn't like me, this is what happened to me, I should have done this. You know where there are ifs and buts and let's do this and let's not do this and this uncertainty and all this happens around that is all our mind, not us. Easiest way to understand self is to start witnessing whatever the mind brings rather than engaging in it. And if you call it a practice, yes, then this is a practice or this is an effort because most of the time we just get swayed into our mind talk. And I'll tell you, most of the people don't even take it at this level. They are at a level where they're always in mind and if you talk to them, they will not understand what I'm talking. So I can go a step further back if you want or if someone is not able to understand what I'm saying, I can explain more. So anyone, it is an open forum. I had no notes. I have no structure. Actually, I emailed Mary this morning that, you know, if you can give me some questions, what I say. And she said, I'm busy today, so I don't know. <laughs> and, and that's the way it is. And I'll tell you the first time when we had Bhagwan Satsang, let me, I have not introduced myself. Let me introduce myself. I am, my name is Sanjay Radha. And I also had an urge, just like all of you, to know what is the meaning of life? Who am I or what is God? Actually, I started with search of God, or loving God or understanding God, coming from religious background and understanding from there and looking into teachings and going through books and all sorts of things during my student life, which was about 30 years ago and went somewhere, learned something, went from there to something and some slow understanding unfolded, some concepts, actually those teachings built up some concepts, deconstructed some concepts and this journey continued in a way where that, that discovery came into being. Uh, and I think it's a process. I should call it a process. It happens in someone's like this. For me, it took a while. And, and look, every, it's all fine. It's all good. At the end, before you finish your earthly journey, if you understand who you are, I think you have succeeded in a way like you have understood. Earlier is good. But then I would say that have patience, have perseverance rather than um, rather than getting anxious about it. That anxiety comes only from the mind because mind wants to grasp things as a concept. But what we are is not a concept. What we are is the truth. So it is beyond mind. It is as if I am this and mind is this. And this is like a gadget, like your laptop or you can say your iPhone and you use it for all the purposes but then you are not this you are you can watch it you can be an observer to it and you can be uninvolved and this is the thing most of the humanity is can't segregate themselves from the mind from thoughts from emotions from feelings and or from body and so we look like we are that only. In truth, it is complete myth and illusion. So going backward is, is the way 
from where the witnessing happens. I have a question. Yes. Uh, is it already? Can, can we uh, ask questions uh, during your your uh, talk or anything? No, no structure. What I'll do is I'll just mute others, so there's less disturbance. Or people can mute themselves if they want, but I have just muted. So you, whoever asks questions, can raise and unmute themselves and ask. Okay, you were talking about yeah, your mind creates tasks, uh, but it's, it's more than that. It's, it's the continuously chatter in your head. And uh, what I try to do in meditation is, is uh, try to catch the voice and, and replace it with, with yeah, a word. In my case, it's at Krishna, uh, which gives me more uh, a state of a divine state. Uh, because I like to visualize uh, Krishna instead of the chatter in my head. But if, if I hear, hear you well, do you leave the chatter going on and you just take a distance of it you just look at it without anything you just observe yeah. it or yeah yeah that's a very good question so what actually happens is that we as a person let's say i'm driving a car i'm going to work you are alone you're not listening to any music nothing but then the mind starts talking to you a thought comes and that thought can be about anything. Now, the interesting fact is that who brings a particular thought at that moment? Who? Is it you? Who chooses, who selects the thought? Why a particular thought comes at a particular time? Why? Have you ever thought about it? So many times, you know, middle of the night at 2 a.m. at 3 a.m., people wake up with, with a worried thought about something which has happened maybe a week ago. And then they can't sleep. And then they are so much occupied in that thought that thought can give rise to stress. Someone has insulted or something has happened or something else has happened. And, and that thought takes you 10 years ago what someone has done to you. And then you can't disengage from that thought. Remember, all the suffering in this world is only a thought. Every suffering comes in form of a thought only. Thoughts with a lot of emotions, grief, stress, anxiety, anger, whatever form it brings. Remember, all the restlessness of our beingness comes from the mind only. If you understand this, Okay, I'll give you an example. Not a very good example, but uh, how people are so fearful of uh, fire. You know, once we bought steam bath thing and my son was only uh, two years old and he wanted to sit in that steam bath. And I said, okay, and I prepared for him, he said, but you know, as a child, they are so inquisitive. So he put his finger from where the steam was coming and he burnt his finger. But then he never ever even entered into that yes. steam bath. You know what I'm trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you, we get bite by this mind every moment, but we still go back to it. Isn't it crazy? If we don't go there, if we just stay as what I am, because we know how much the mind bites us, how much suffering it creates. Why to go there? What fun is there? But our memory is so short and our engagement with mind is so old that we don't remember this and go back and then we suffer and then we want to get rid of the mind. You know, nobody complains about the mind when it is a good time when you are having, you found a lover or life, oh my God, and you are deep in those emotions or you are at the peak of your success. We only complain about mind when it shows us bad time, bad thoughts, negative thoughts, when failure is happening and then we th have a, a thought of that I am a failure and um, you know nothing is working for me. Then we look into spirituality and religion or meditation or counselor or a psychologist. 
And if you see a lot of saints say the same thing, that suffering is bliss. Because suffering brings a lot of people into spirituality and to know what they are. Like Mary knows, you know, we used to take cancer retreat programs, residential retreat programs. And when such a big thing has happened to someone, they are very open. And uh, all the spirituality goes so deep within because they know the time is limited now. So they want to know what is real purpose of life. Until then, most of the people are just going like mechanical, robotic life. Whatever is happening, we are doing and never even having a pause to reflect, to contemplate, who am I, why I am doing this? Because everyone is doing, I am doing. Everyone is going to watch a football show, so I have to go. Everyone is going at midnight to have that ice cream, I have to go. Like we just, we, we work like, not even like animals, you know, if you see animals, not the pets, but the wild animals, you observe them, they, there's a food there, they will not eat it. Only they will eat when they are hungry. And even then they will smell it first and they will make sure that this is the right food for them and then they will eat it. For us as human beings, we have lost all that because we are so much into the mind and uh, you know, indulgence of sensations and sensory organs that we have lost that ability to, that discernment, which is very powerful, which is much powerful than your mind. Mind is like a small gadget. Yes, if you and your iPhone, it is such a big difference. But because we have always used mind, we don't know any other means of working in this world without mind. When I say without mind, doesn't mean that you don't use mind. But right now, mind is using you. So this has to, there should be role reversal. Then only you can be happy. This constant chatter is our own creation. Understand this. Because whatever thought is coming, we must have put a seed for that thought at some stage in our life. Maybe not at that moment, maybe 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago, we don't know. Now, if we want to unwind, what is the way? Don't engage with any type of thought for any reason whatsoever. Stay as a witness. And this witnessing is, is hard because we don't know what it is because we always engage with the thought. We are always like short fuse. I use the term short fuse. Something happens and we just jump. Someone dislikes us, criticizes and we feel unhappy. Someone just pats on our back, we feel elated. We have given our switches of our life to others. Others have control on our life, not us. The moment you understand that you are that peace, you are that bliss, you are that happiness, no external thing or being can give you happiness. You're always that happiness. And if you want to dive deep into that happiness, you have to leave one friend. I should not call it a friend. It's actually an enemy right now, your mind. If you leave this friendship, you will be eternally happy and blissful. What mind does, mind always analyzes things. That's what its job. It analyzes, it, is, it does critical analysis. It criticizes things. It uh, likes, it dislikes. You know, if you live alone or you have a partner or a friend or whatever, you go to a party. And if you're coming back from a party, two people going in the same Vehicle, they will be discussing, or oh, this person was like that, that person was like that, he didn't respect, the food was not good, or something, you know, what is this? 
This is the job of the mind. It always tries to analyze things in detail. But what it does in this way, when we start analyzing people, we start judging people, we create a notion about others. Maybe we start liking them or we dislike them. In both cases, we are in bondage. If we like too much and I can't approach, then I can do something stupid to get that person. And if I dislike, then I, I will be full of enormity and you know anger or I hate and all those feelings. There is no need to like or to dislike, to judge or analyze. Because things just happens. Things just happens. And, and who am I to judge anyone who is angry on me? Maybe he has never seen love in his life. And so he's full of anger. I should have compassion for him rather than being angry on him if he's angry on me. Or maybe whatever life has brought, that's the way we are. I'll tell you, the moment you give up this friendship, you will be the most happiest person. I can't say whether you will have money or not, but definitely happiness. Because mind gives you a lot of false hopes. It tells you, I will get, get you this, I will get you that, and you know, I'll do this. This doership, which is, which is completely fake, I'll tell you. Okay, I, I can understand some people are so much do, 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 and they think doership has brought them there. Well and good. But if you even believe that, it doesn't bring you happiness. That's for sure. The moment you start living a life where you are not engaging with your story, you know, everyone has a story. Everyone can write a book which can be a big success. But I'll tell you, everyone's story is same. Everyone's. I'll tell you why. Ego tries to prove that I'm the best person. And if there's a flaw in the world, I do good to everyone. And people have dished me. People are cheaters. And I'm a good person. Everyone feels like that. Can you believe? I'll tell you an example. I'm a doctor. So one of my friends, she's a GP. And we were coming back from... Um, a religious uh, program was someone's, you know, mother died and they had a religious program. So we were coming back. And she was telling about uh, a patient who told her that I am so depressed and, you know, my partner has cheated on me. So she said, well and good, you know, move on. What can you do? See a psychologist. But then while talking, she was talking about how this partner cheated. And she said that this partner actually was a builder who was trying to build his, her house. And then they had an affair. But this person was already married with three kids. And then this person has lost interest and is not building house. And and she has not paid any money, nothing, no money financial transaction has happened. She said, this he has cheated me. Now you can take perspective from your own side always that what about his wife? Who has cheated his wife? You know, this is the thing. Ego always puts you into the right perspective. I am the right person and the fault is in others. Till we live in the egoistic self, we will always suffer because life will give us lessons. It will slap on our face all the time to tell us you have to be awake. You have to live in the truth. You don't have to live for this. In reality, I'll tell you, this body, what we think is ours, is not our body. 
we are only using it for a very short time. If you see this earth is so old, billions of years, we live for 100 years. And in this 100 years, when we will be out of this body, nobody knows. And this body keeps changing all the time. And one day we have to leave this body, whether you like it or not, whether you want to leave it or not, but you have to leave this body one day. But until then, we do everything to keep this body, isn't it? We are so possessed about this body that we don't want to leave it. And all our efforts are to please its senses, to protect it from others. This feeling of others that I am this and someone else is somewhere else is all myth. But let's not go that far because then it is, I'm giving you a concept rather than giving you something to understand. But that is what you will say when you will stay as self awareness, not in your mind. You will realize that you are so empty because all this garbage which makes us heavy is our mind and its thoughts. And I'll tell you, this chatter mind will leave you as fast as you try to avoid into it. If you start witnessing now, you will start noticing the number of thoughts, intrusive thoughts, and their capacity to engage you will get less and less and less. And slowly and steadily, you will see that there are big silent spaces. And this silence is the pure bliss. You will, I don't want to give you these terms because then you will think this is a concept. I'm not giving you any concept. But when you touch your own silence, you will be in so much of bliss that even if someone insults you, you don't care. You will only hug that person. Because what you can give to others is what you have. If you have love, you can only give love. If you have hate, you can only give hate. So this love is our real nature. We are full of love. And we are looking love outside in the world. What a shame. Because this is the mind. Mind always keeps us external looking into the world never looking within. Because it is the same instrument, same mind, which when it goes out, looks for things and beings, then it is called as mind. The same mind when it turns and pays attention to that witness, it dissolves in that witnessing. So there is no chatter. Because mind also needs rest. Who is not giving rest to the mind? We. We are so greedy and selfish and self-centered that we want mind to give me this, give me that. We have umpteen number of desires. So mind, poor mind is just taking us from this to this to this to this. And then when we don't get it, we get unhappy. And then the sorrow comes and negative thought comes and all these things happen. But the moment same mind if you turn within and turning is just witnessing life, your life, others' life. Stop judging your life. Stop judging your actions. Stop judging others' actions. Just stay as you are no one. Like you are no thing. Like you don't exist. Live like that. See how difficult it is to start with. Because we are so opinionated. We want to say, we want our say. But if you stay as in a crowd, you don't exist. Then look, you will be in peace. When we want to put a mark in this world, then we are never at rest. We are always looking. 
to please others or to impress others or if you take this one thing in yourself that you have to impress only your own self no one else not even your ego you will be free in no time because this duality in us is this ego which is thinking thinking process achieving doership and then there is this witnessing is happening inside which we have no clue because we think we are this small self but moment you look within and you stay there now i have to give you a word of caution this looking within and staying don't take it as a 5 minute or 10 minute or 1 hour meditation it will never work only thing work is which you do more all the time you have to be in that witnessing that is why i don't call it meditation or if you call it meditation that this meditation has to be incessant continuous like a flowing river if you do it for one hour then you can continue doing for millions of years nothing will happen do you understand where the problem is the same structure called mind if it's extroverted all the time all the time all the time then it will stay extroverted that is a habit if it stays introverted all the time all the time all the time then it dissolves in that same it is like you are making a soup and you put on a simmer for 5 minutes or 2 minutes every day one day you think it will boil how can it boil you have to reach that boiling threshold isn't it understand there is lot on stake right now for freedom for your true freedom but it is doable and only you can do it when we talk about experiences i know the experiences um, are beautiful and in spirituality a lot of people get beautiful experiences as fred was saying i visualize and i visualize krishna and it takes me away from you know negative thoughts that's so beautiful but again it's an experience when it is not there then you will be down so you are still in the roller coaster of the mind only because experience is coming at a mind level understand this all experiences even divine even spiritual are at mind level only though i can say that they are still sign post that you are evolving but you're not there so try to be that which is always that bliss which is that krishna you know krishna consciousness or christ consciousness or whatever you want to call it that is our own self once by efforts you stay there detached from your mind for some time it is in natural state then efforts will drop on its own uh, because you said for me it's no meditation it's a continuously yeah you know, way of living but does meditation not help to make the transformation or is it just yeah <laughs> a kind of switch in your head and you don't have even to meditate anymore you're always in that state yes so it is not a meditation and that's what i'm saying so if you understand from your heart not giving it as a concept or as a process as a method and if you just stay what else do you need i'll tell you what it needs is i think mary wants to say something mary you want to say um sorry i'll just unmute myself can you hear me yes yes yeah great i've got headphones in um so i'm 
kind of looking at this as um, for the week ahead, like a practical application of how I could start weaving this um, non-concept <laughs> into my everyday life. And so I'm, I'm just checking in with you about this. If I was to like maybe like the receptive kind of state that I kind of drop into um, when I go into, I guess, what they would label as a meditative state, although I feel like it's just a state of stillness and being for myself, but it, it's a receptive state for me. That's how it feels. It's very receptive. But if I was to kind of um, then obviously prepare to go to work, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. I'm, I'm curious about maybe some initial strategies of how you can pull that in to, I'm sure as a neurologist for you and a doctor, your mind has to switch on throughout the day as well, you know, how we can start to tie that into our daily activities, maybe one application. Sure, sure. I'll give you an example. In India, in villages, uh, females' job is to get water from the well or from the river. And because they have to travel a long distance, they carry one pitcher on the top of others. So they might be carrying like four or five on the top. So they all go, all the females, the friends, they will go together. They will go up to that river. That might be maybe... 500 meters or 1k or 2k whatever the distance is they are having a good fun when they come back they are carrying pitcher over pitcher of full of water they are when they come back they are still talking to each other they, they are cracking jokes whatever they are doing but all the time everyone's attention is on those pictures so mm -hmm. they are doing things here they are talking to each other they are enjoying but their attention is there all the time. And this is a very good example told by Saint to me long time back. This is the way we should live. Attention mm. here in awareness and then whatever mind has to do, body has to do, let it do, but attention here. And it is doable first by efforts, yes. I would say that sometimes it might happen that you get involved in an argument, you completely get lost. But because you're practicing, you would come back. Maybe after a few minutes, doesn't matter. And then you will acknowledge this, which you have lost for that moment. And then things are happening and you are aware. It is not even an entity, it is not an object, it is you. It is you as awareness which in which everything is unfolding. Thoughts are unfolding, emotions are unfolding, pain to the body, suffering, situations are changing, people are coming and going. And one beautiful thing I would tell you is that when you stay, you will realize it is a particular day which goes in a way if people have to be angry, upset, everyone is complaining, it's like a day, first person, and then the whole day is like that. <laughs> One day, you know, everyone is happy with you. <laughs> One day, nothing is going in the way you thought it would go. And, and just acknowledging that and just staying happy. Can I ask Sanjay, is there at the beginning of your um experience with this style of of I, I don't want to call it practice because I don't want it to be a concept like you were saying at the beginning but when you started um embracing this um this inner practice did you have like a question that or a statement when you're in in one of those let's say a conflicting situation or an uncertain time and you're noticing a reaction from yourself would you is there something that like a statement or, or, or an intention that you would hold to kind of like pull away from the situation and observe? Or is it, was it just an instant doing? 
Yeah, look, uh, in, in my case, I have to say that um, I, I was pulled back into it um, unknowingly. So if I, if I can share that experience that happened long time back, um, I can't even remember, maybe around 10 plus years. And um, I was attending a yoga uh, program in India, in Bangalore. And, and after that program, I came to my room and I was just sitting and suddenly I found myself that I'm in the whole room. Whole room is me, everything is me. And I could not locate me as in a specific location. That was so blissful, but then uh, I had no clue what it was. So um, very intense. And, um, and then everything was so, um, so blissful, like even doing a brush and putting the paste on the brush. And it was so divine and um, I had no clue. And it was deep peace and silence. So I had no clue how it came because um, I was not doing anything at that moment. And I thought because in yoga, you have to sit with your spine erect and whole day, you know, in India, you sit on the floor, squatting postures, maybe that has done something to me or the, or the mantras you chant before the classes might have done, I have no clue. Then I Googled it and I could not find much information exact what was happening to me. And, and anyway, so that type of awareness, uh, that intensity actually went away, but something left, which never left me. When it never left me, um, and I had only one question what it is, <laughs> though I was enjoying it, but I had no idea what it is. And, um, and then I found uh, Bhagavan Ramana's teachings by three different people told me in two days time that you should look. And they were, they were not knowing each other. And then I thought this is something. And then I went there and looked through the books and all exactly this is something just what I went through, you know. And so it looked like this is, what, this is what it was. And then reading what he went through and uh, all the books, there are not many books actually, but a um, lot of devotees have written and, uh, and I have been many times there and I just became his devotee. Um, and it's very hard to say when I'm already feeling peace, why I have to be his devotee, but I don't know. It, uh, it looked like coming home when I went there and looked through everything. It just like, it sucked me in, you know, that energy. Maybe it's so pure energy. So if, if I have to tell you, I, I have to tell you the only thing retrospective, if I think, could be my deep longing to know the self or know the God. I had no clue about this term self. This is only when I came to this Ramana and Bhagwan and all those things. Before that, I was always eager to know God. God always was in my mind for many years. I, 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 it is a journey. Like I went through so many things, so many practices, and and what Fred I can I can um, very well relate with Fred that you know Krishna consciousness or things like you know a lot of things a lot of things are there you know which you can practice and do and but somehow one day one fine day when you are for that when you have devoted your life for that for that self that awareness you can call it anything God or whatever. It just sucks everything into it and it opens its doors for you. It, I don't know what happens. It, it will transform you. It will take away all what garbage we have collected. Just, and then the thing is that you are so empty, but then that emptiness is full of bliss and this is so much peaceful. Like nothing affects you. Like it's not like you are numb or you become uh, emotionless. Probably you become very soft. So it is a paradox. Like you are very soft, you become compassionate, but then you become so still, like a mountain. 
like there's a mountain there, Mary, in Arunachala. And I always feel that stillness is like a mountain, you know. It is so beautiful. How it happens, um, that's why I don't want to call it any technique because I have tried all the techniques. Maybe it is like when you give up, then it happens. I don't know. And so I don't want to go through techniques because someone can say to me that, look, probably you need all those techniques to reach there, but I don't know when it happened, just happened. And then um, I, I went through these teachings and these teachings are so pure, so pristine and so direct that um, it looked like my own language, I should say, when I, when I saw all the time. I don't know. The only thing is your own interest to know the self or God. If you are really, really keen about it, if you have really deep down desire to know, it will happen. Nobody can stop. Whether there is a technique or a process or nothing, I can't say. The only thing needed is your, your longing for it which in uh, Sanskrit, there is a beautiful word, mumukshutva, mumuksha. You're, you can't even, um, even in Hindi or English, I don't know. But this is like, you just want this. Like, let's say your body is on fire. Yeah, like your, sorry? Like your body is on fire and you want to just jump into the river. It's like that, that intense longing to know. When that longing is there, it will happen. And how it will happen in someone only that God knows, but it will happen, there's no doubt. So when I talk about this thing, uh, what happens and what it is, I can only talk about this um, awareness, which we all are, we are always that. So if you step back, from the mind domain, everything changes. Then you are not a person anymore and you can't live the life internally what you are living. Like that expert commentary on any everything which comes, whether you do right or wrong. You know, you see people do this thing, something, oh, I've done this thing wrong, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, or, you know, oh, I will not invite this person, you know, and then two days later, oh, I should have invited, oh, so let me invite on next weekend. Look, all these games of the mind, they are all, this all is garbage, which happens in everyone in more form or less, depending on how much garbage they have already collected. This all worldly talk will disappear forever. And then, I don't know, for me, you know, it was more than two and a half years that I was completely misfit because I had no clue what to talk to anyone for any reason. Because all is that gossip which comes in form of something. Either we talk about ourselves um, as I'm really big, or we talk about ourselves as if word should have pity on us, or we talk about all nonsense. So all this, understand that whatever we speak, first it comes as a thought only. But let's say if there is no thought, then what will come out of it? So this silence, this inner silence is so important for all human beings whether they believe in God or they don't believe in God or they are atheist or they live in Australia or Belgium, doesn't matter. Wherever you are, whoever you are, you should know this pure self. And to know this pure self is don't engage with all these things which mind brings to us. 
and let's just stay detached from that. So let's catch up uh, next week uh, because I could see Mary has said goodbye in a way because I think it was for 45 minutes. But uh, practice it and stay in that bliss of your own and And it will happen, it has to happen. There's no other way because that's what we all are. So we will catch up next time. And if you have any questions, you can always um, post to whatever email is. And I have to say that I have no clue how we have gathered because um, we decided and then I forget about it. Only Mary reminded me yesterday that I have also enrolled otherwise you will not remember what is happening. So yes, so, and she has helped me to get it again because last time, uh, anyway. So we'll, so Mary, you can be the timekeeper. So let's stop now, isn't it? And we'll catch up in next time, same time, 45 yeah. minutes. 45 okay. minutes. Yeah, no, that was wonderful, Sanjay. Thank you so much. Thank you for Thank sharing. You Thank you. It was Thank you, beautiful. Sanjay. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you Bye next week.